All right. Uh, hello, everyone, and thank you all for joining us during the Lithum Partners Investor Select Conference. My name is Robert Bloom, Managing Partner of Lithum Partners. During this webcast, we welcome Limbach, ticker symbol LMB, on the NASDAQ, uh, and their Chief Executive Officer, Charlie Bacon, Chief Operating Officer, Mike McCann, and Chief Financial Officer, Jamie Brooks. Uh, before I turn it over to management to walk us through the slide presentation, I want to remind everyone that if you've not already signed up for a one-on-one -on -one meeting and would like to do so, please send me an email at bloom, B-L-U-M, at lithumpartners.com, or you can visit our website, lithumpartners.com forward slash virtual, click on the one-on-one -on -one meeting request button, and we will look to get you all set. So team, the floor is yours. Please begin. Thank you, Robert, and uh, to everybody joining us today, appreciate your interest in our company. Um, what is Limbach? Well, we're an integrated building systems solution firm, and um, we've been around for a while, since 1901. We've got a very, very strong brand. Uh, we went public in 2016, and we want to share a bunch of details with you today so you can get smart on our company. Uh, and I also you know, want to reinforce these three words that are on the cover sheet. And I think you should frame our company around these three words. Number one, we are an essential business. What do I mean by that? Well, what the company does is we provide systems that provide heat, air conditioning, uh, plumbing, electrical, and building automation. And many of our customers, they can't stay in business without our services. And we become essential to them. And we like to comment, you'll hear us use these words often here today, around being mission critical to our customer base. Without us, they can't revenue. And that's an extremely important sticky part of what we provide. And especially in these economic times where uh, there's questions about revenue and the future and what could happen because of possible recession looming, from our perspective, our customers absolutely need us. So they have to spend the money and keep their systems up and running. By the word diverse, uh, we're really focusing in on our customer base. We have over 1,200 customers that make up our portfolio. There's no heavy concentration in any one customer. We have a number of market sectors we provide our services to, such as healthcare, research and development laboratories, data centers, and there's a number of more sectors that we'll get into in the presentation. And then finally, uh, our geographic footprint, we have 16 offices mainly concentrated east of the Mississippi, and we'll be talking about our expansion plans to increase the scale of our business um, as we go through the deck. Finally, evolving. That word is really important. We've been around since 1901. And for a business to last this long, it has to constantly evolve its strategy and its direction. Recently, we made a decision, actually back in 2019, to launch a new focused effort, which is a game-changing strategy and we're very happy with our decision because we're actually two years ahead of schedule from where we thought we would be. And I'll get into those details. Let's uh, change the slide, please. We, of course, have our forward looking statement. I'm not going to read that to you, but be advised it's there. Now, again, I believe I already covered the majority here. And what I really want to touch on here is how we are different. Um, the difference between us and our competitors is we have a real focus on understanding our customer's business. We're not just a company that will build out an HVAC, heating and air conditioning project, uh, and then move on. No, we want to get to know our customer and stay with them forever. That's our, that's our goal and objective. But the way we do that is we actually learn their businesses and we help them understand how to improve their return off the physical assets, their buildings. We have an industry-leading platform through our engineering services. We actually go in and re-engineer, design systems. We're always thinking about the economies and go back to what are the customer's issues? How do we help them basically eliminate their pain in operating their buildings? Finally, we have a full life cycle offering from concept of a building being thought about or being retrofitted all the way through maintaining it and everything in between. And I'm gonna to touch on that in a moment. Before I move on, I do want to mention that we did issue a major press release on January 17th. Um, and that press release had to do with succession planning that's been underway for a couple of years. 
I determined a couple of years ago with my wife that 2023 was the year that I wanted to uh, give up my CEO presidential responsibilities. I've been doing this for 27 years, 19 here at Limbach, running Limbach as the CEO. And um, I asked Mike McCann a couple of years ago if he'd like to run the company. And he said yes. And I'm very happy that the board of directors on January 16th, we had a unanimous vote to elevate Mike to become the CEO of the business on March 29th. I'll be stepping down. I'll remain an advisor through the month of April, and I'll continue on the board of directors through uh, the annual meeting, which takes place in June. I am one of the largest individual share, excuse me, I am the largest individual shareholder of the company stock, and I'm very excited that Mike agreed to do this. He's the right person for the job, and I'm thrilled that he's going to be moving forward. Uh, Mike will join the board of directors, and you'll hear from Mike in a moment. Mike, let's go to the next slide. So coming back to what the company does, in the very center in that aqua bar, you see MEP construction. Now, there's a lot of people out there doing what we do in terms of just building buildings. But what sets us apart is over to the left and actually to the right. Let's start on the left, the value creation part. And that's really important. That's where we start our relationships with building owners and then continue those relationships, helping them with their building assets. We get involved with engineering. We do virtual design and construction where we have some amazing technologies we employ. We do energy modeling, building automation, making sure the buildings are operating as efficient as possible, facility analytics to help customers understand how their building is going to operate so they can predict, predict costs into the future. Um, over on the far right, you see the recurring revenue comment there at the bottom of the screen. It's all about maintenance and ongoing project work with that building owner. Once you're in and providing you continue to do a good job for them, you actually never go away. And that creates the annuity income stream for the business. So again, we mine the revenue from concept all the way through ongoing operations of that building. It's a great business. Let's go to the next slide, Mike. So I mentioned earlier about a game-changing strategy. And what we decided to do in 2019 was to shift our revenue streams, which prior to 2020 was predominantly through general contractors, where we're a subcontractor building out mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and building automation systems for them in a new building, retrofit. Um, and while that's been the history of the company, we actually looked at the other side, the other segment of owner direct, and we were really doing well in that, both in terms of cash generation, profitability, um, every element of, quite frankly, the measures, our metrics that we measure ourselves by, were much better with ODR. So we just made a decision in 2019 to create a plan that we would rapidly accelerate the growth of ODR and really focus on ODR. And on GCR, really focus on limiting how much we take on, the size of the projects, and really look at quality, not quantity. So we set a goal for ourselves that by 2025, we would have a 50-50 mix of revenue between both segments. We're gonna hit that two years early. We're gonna hit that in 2023. So we're really excited about that. Now, where do we go from there? We've not announced any sort of other measures, but I would imagine, I believe Mike will touch on this, we will go far beyond the 50-50 mix and see ODR continuing to grow. And let me just point out a couple of numbers on this deck the slide. Um, on the GCR side, general contractors, you see our gross margins are 12 to 13%. Now go to the right-hand side of the slide, you'll see that the gross margins for ODR are 25 to 28%. So again, just simply put, the gross margins are much better. And quite frankly, we get paid uh, much quicker with the ODR relationships, which is great for free cash flow. Let's go to the next slide, please. In terms of um, investment highlights, number one, strong sector tailwinds, and you see some words here highlighted. We believe there's gonna be a lot more onshoring happening here with everything that's going on with China right now, and obviously in Europe due to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. We believe there's gonna be a lot more focus here in the United States. It's a safe place to invest your capital to build production facilities. And in December of 21, we acquired a very nice business and it's proven out to be a great acquisition for us in Chattanooga, Tennessee, with a company called Jake Marshall, who really focuses in on manufacturing and industrial. So we had the foresight to move forward with that. 
And we're very excited about what's happening. It seems like every day in the newspaper, there's another major factory being announced, planned, or under construction. Uh, the diversity and end markets, I've already commented on that, so I'm not going to spend any time on that. Essential provider, it really gets down to us targeting and securing mission-critical type customers. You know, an office building, quite frankly, it's not mission critical. But when you start talking about a healthcare facility, a research and development laboratory for the pharmaceutical or biotech industry, those types of facilities are mission critical, and that's our customer base. Um, in terms of recurring revenue, it's the maintenance contracts. It's a wonderful thing, and once you're in, you stay there. And um, I already mentioned about the ODR rapid growth. This past year, we've grown by 40, over 40%. Part of that was through acquisition, but just great organic as well as acquisition growth. Strong balance sheet, we have a very, very strong cash position, and we've rapidly paid down our debt. Finally, the attractive valuation. Um, our share price is trading up. Over the past um, six months, we've gone from $5.25, and uh, recently we hit um, $13.11 as a high. So we're trading up. But that multiple is still very low compared to our peers, where Comfort Systems, FIX, they're trading at over 17 times, and MCOR, uh, EME, trading at over 13 times. We're trading in the five to six time range, so there's still plenty of opportunity here for um, increased uh, return on your investment. And I just want to mention that management, as well as the board of directors over the past year, we've continued to invest in ourselves, invest in the company buying more shares, we believe in where we're going. Mike, I'm going to turn this over to you. As Charlie mentioned before, essential is a critical part of our strategy. The reason we're essential comes down to the type of building profiles that we uh, pursue. And that the building has to have mission critical equipment. That means if the equipment goes down on the weekend and there's not a response in an hour or two, that's not necessarily the account that we want to pursue. We're very selective in the accounts and the customer profiles. And just as a quick descriptor to that, critical if they need to have critical infrastructure, multiple buildings is what we end up looking for. Are they, do they have the funding to implement the solutions that we provide and do they want to partner with us? We're very selective and disciplined in our local markets to make it sure that we have accounts that are mission critical. Um, just a couple examples of these mission critical accounts. One is on the screen here. Uh, major healthcare group across the country, and um, we've worked over the last five or six years to be their trusted partner. When God forbid disaster comes, they were their first call, and, um, and we act as a partner, a consultant type partner to them um, to solve their problems. Another example uh, in healthcare I'll get into later is one of our largest vertical markets is um, in, in December, there was issues in the Midwest regarding cold weathers and cold snaps, and one of our customers that we reached, reached trusted partner status um, called us, had us come in on the weekends. We responded. We were there for them. And that really worked. That, that was precipitated by a, our strategy of being that trusted partner, picking the right accounts. A um, couple of things I want to point out, but one of the things that we're absolutely laser focused on is making sure we allocate capital to the right vertical markets, geographies, and customers. Um, over the last three or four years, as we started our evolution, we've compiled a tremendous amount of customers, over 1,200 customers. Um, and you can see in the bottom left-hand corner some of who those customers are. Um, that cost us a lot from a sales expense perspective. And at this point, what we're really trying to do is leverage those relationships. We may actually have too many customers. Um, we're really focused on getting that customer list down to the point where we can leverage and we have our people on the best accounts, which will get the best return of human capital. And then we're having extreme focus on our top 30 to 50 accounts. How can we get to that trusted partner status? How can we have people and our staff on those, on those building owner sites every day um, and position ourselves to be that partner? From a vertical market perspective on the bottom right-hand corner, um, certain vertical markets tend to lend itself to mission critical. Healthcare is a major ver vertical market for us. Mission critical data centers, industrial manufacturing, higher ed life science, those are the key vertical markets that we focus on. Again, we're very selective. Um, we consider ourselves specialists, not generalists, and we're really focused on chasing accounts, not opportunities. Um, as Charlie mentioned before, we have two major segments. GCR and owner direct. And 
just to describe kind of how these relationships evolve, typically it starts with us resolving a problem. And that could be a direct response to a building owner, or that could be a relationship developed through a GCR project. Um, as we earn their trust, a key aspect of our strategy is to dedicate a resource. Um, and that could be from a craft talent and also from an office talent as well too. Once we dedicate the resources, we understand their problems, they see us solving solutions, then we get into the trusted partner perspective. And the reason the trusted partner, partner status is really important to us is we measure that by the sharing of information between us and that building owner. Um, we want to get to the point where we get from a reactive relationship to a proactive relationship. And those relationships really evolve based upon the data and the information that the customer gives to us. Whether that's utility bills, trending through the building automation system, service ticket information, we can gather all that information and they feel comfortable sharing that data. Then we can be more proactive in the solutions that give them predictive solutions and, be, and plan out their spend over a period of time. Um, we're trying to drive tremendous wallet share from our customers. We see opportunities to get both to get work from both revenue streams. Recurring revenue is extremely important to us. And as we build our relationships and drive value, um, at that point, we feel like we've, we're going to continue to earn margin. That's going to drive higher margin as we go forward too. All of this is going to drive, as Charlie mentioned before, we're going to continue to strive to continue to push our owner direct mix up. So four key items from a growth strategy perspective. We've made investment in sales strategy um, and sales resources. Right now, we're really focused on account managers. How can we leverage um, to drive as much work and to change the relationship and evolve the relationship from, uh, from those key accounts? The second piece of it is disciplined approach. Whether it's an owner direct opportunity or a GCR opportunity, um, we want to optimize the return on labor. We want to make sure we're disciplined in our selections. We want to make sure we position ourselves to get the best return. From an organic geographic perspective, as our building owner relationships develop, there's going to be opportunities. And one of the points that I mentioned before is finding a building owning customer that has mission critical equipment with multiple buildings. Um, when they have multiple buildings, there may be an adjacent geography with another set of buildings that they want us to service. We view this organic geographic expansion as a direct correlation to our building, uh, building customer relationship expansion. And then lastly, from an acquisition perspective, we're looking for synergy. Um, we made an acquisition with the Jake Marshall in Chattanooga, and um, that drove tremendous synergies from a, drove us into the industrial market, uh, worked nicely with some of our national customers. We're make, we wanna make sure that we acquire companies um, we're want, we want to make sure that they have a set list of building owner customers that can help us. And we want those our business, the organic and the acquisitions to work together. And ultimately, just to put a pin on that, we have our value creation model that we've developed in the last three or four years. We want to take that plus their local brand and niche and put the two, put the two together. Um, from an ODR growth perspective, we started our journey um, in late in 2019. And it took a little bit of time momentum. It was a little bit like a flywheel. We have to put tremendous pressure initially. We had to change the way that we had done business for years. But I think as our local operators started to understand and our customers started to understand, things started to happen. And you can see in the last three quarters of tremendous growth, 22%, 30% and up to 40% as well too. We expect there to be continued growth as we continue to focus on these relationships. From a GCR perspective, we've been very intentional about our GCR revenue. You can see we've, we've tried to right size our GCR revenue. We're looking for the right return on our capital. At the same time, the revenue has gone down. The percentage of gross profit has gone up. It's gone up from 10% to almost 14% on the right-hand side, as well as the total dollar gross profit. So we've been able to right size the revenue we've been able to increase the dollars of gross profit and the percentage of gross profit. And we're gonna to continue to be selective and disciplined. As our owner direct revenue uh, continues to become a bigger share, it's gonna allow us to be disciplined, selective and position ourselves for these GCR opportunities. From an acquisition perspective, our key focus really is filling out the geography. You can see in the teal color is where we currently have uh, local operations. The blue purple color is where we're looking to expand. For the most part, it's east of the Mississippi into Texas. Um, we're looking for adjacent geographies. And some of the key points that I pointed out before is we're looking for 
the potential acquisition to have a strong local brand, a niche, and a list of building owner customers. Um, we view that as a key piece from a diversification perspective and also from a synergistic perspective with our organic business. Um, additionally, other attributes that we're looking for is they can expand us into an enough, another vertical market with mission critical equipment. Um, do they have additional products and services that we can offer our building owners? So east of the Mississippi is our focus. We're looking for synergy and we have lots of opportunity to fill a geography that we currently aren't in right now. Um, from an opportunist perspective, um, from a pure margin perspective, EME is MCOR, FIX is Comfort, two of the larger competitors of ours in our, in, in our space. You can see on the right-hand side of where our gross profit margin is, and we believe we still have tremendous opportunity above the 18.8%. Um, again, as we continue to evolve our, relation, our relationships, become stickier and position ourselves, we see lots of opportunity for gross margin perspective. From a bottom line perspective, um, we view there's opportunity in that as well, because as we expand the company, grow the revenue, we'll be able to leverage the SGNA. So if we combine increased gross profit, leverage of SGNA, we believe, that, believe there's tremendous opportunity from a bottom line perspective. So just as a summary, a couple key points that I want you to leave with. The company's been around since 1901. The could companies evolve? And in this latest phase, we continue to evolve um, and expand our relationships. Diversification, that diversification is going to continue as we continue with acquisitions. We're focused on each local market has a set of vertical markets, vertical sectors that they focus on. We've got diverse geography across east of the Mississippi currently, and we look for that to continue. Gross profit expansion, um, again, as our relationships with our customers evolve, we view there's tremendous opportunity from a gross profit perspective. And then lastly, from a balance sheet, strong balance sheet to allow us to make strategic moves as we move, move forward as well. Thank you, everybody, and turn it back over to Robert. All right, great. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Greatly appreciate uh, you running through the deck here today. Um, I'll just uh, remind everyone once again that if you've not already uh, scheduled a one-on-one -on -one meeting with management uh, and would like to do so, please send me an email uh, at bloom, B-L-U-M, at uh, lithumpartners.com. Or again, you can visit the website, lithumpartners.com forward slash virtual, click on that one-on-one -on -one, uh, meeting request button. Uh, we'll look to get you care, uh, taken care of. So Charlie, Mike, Jamie, thanks so much. We hope you all enjoy the conference. Thank you. Thank you.